Hi, this week we're going to create a flyer about internet safety uh, using InDesign. So you go into your Adobe Cloud and you click open on InDesign. InDesign is an accurate layout program which allows you to lay out, to do the layout for graphics and for text when you're preparing a publication of some kind, whether it's electronic, an ebook, or whether it's something to be printed. If I want a new document, I can choose one of the sizes that are already there or I can click on New File and I can go into the sizes here. So, for example, if I change picas to centimeters, you'll get an idea. 21 centimeters by 29.7. That's, I think, A4 or letter size. I'm not quite sure. Um, I can choose one. I, oh, I can do here a portrait and landscape. So the orientation, I can change it from more than one page. I'm going to do a flyer, so that's a one-page document. Facing pages, if I had more than one page and I wanted page two and three to be opposite each other, then I would click facing pages. I'm going to choose two columns just to show you what that looks like. And I can change my gutters and margins and things like that to make the margins bigger or smaller. So I click create and I got my document. So when the document opens up, you're going to see two boxes because I chose two columns. So there you can see I've got two boxes here. These are the two columns. These are guidelines only. They don't print on the page. These are a blank. They just give me an idea where the center of the page is to allow me to do accurate layout. To do layout in this document, oh, by the way, I've got my properties at the top here. That's because I went in here and instead of having essentials, I choose, chose essentials classic which is kind of old school look, just because I prefer it that way. So you can do it either way. If you choose essentials, then your properties are on the side here rather than at the top. So the whole idea is to do the layout, you choose frames. So if you look at your menus here, you've got your movement tools, text tools, you go to the frame tool, you right click it, and I'm going to choose a rectangular frame. And I'm going to put it for the whole page. So I'm going to go the whole page and it snaps to the size because it's um, it got, I kind of put it close to the guides. It's showing the whole page and I can now go in and put some color in. So this is the properties up here. So where you see that fill, I could go click, click in there and I could just go and choose a colored background and that puts a whole uh, background color on the page. That's my page color, essentially. I can then click the rectangle tool again, and I open up another box, and you'll notice it's got the cross there, um, and I'm going to put my text inside here. I'm just going to, with the movement tool, I'm actually going to go to that bigger box, and I'm just going to delete it so that we can see more clearly what we're working with. So I'm now working on a blank page. I'm not working on a, a colored page. So I've got my cross in here. And if I right click on that, I can choose. Uh, I can choose content and you'll notice I can have either graphic or text. So I'm going to choose text. The cross disappears. And I go and choose my type tool. I click on that and I click inside the box. And it's blinking, it's ready for me to type text. So my flyer is going to be about keeping your passwords private. So I'm going to say, keep your passwords private. I select it by going Control A. And now these are the properties of the text. So I can go and choose the font, uh, change the font face. Let's say I choose Bauhaus. Uh, I can go and choose re change regular and change it to bold or italics. Not all font faces have bold or italics, like Bauhaus doesn't, but others do. I can choose the font size, put it up to, for example, 48. Just underneath that, you've got a tool here, which you'll notice if I do that, it pushes the text further away. If I make it smaller, it pushes the text closer together. Uh, let me go to the alignment and just put it in the center. So the alignment's over there. It's now in the center. If I wanted it, I could do all caps, or small caps, superscript, subscript, uh, underline, strike through. Uh, I've got all kinds of options here. 
So this one is for, um, if I go here and I go, no, I've got to use that tool. Oh, come on, go optical. And I just chain, let me put metrics. The one underneath you'll notice just is just pulling things tighter together. I'm now pushing them out. Okay, so as you can see, I don't know what I'm doing. If you need to know exactly how these kernings and things like that, exactly how they work, um, a percentage and, and things like that, I don't know what I'm doing. Go onto YouTube and find out how those work. I just play with them until it looks nice. That's what I do. So to change the color, you go to the big T. I know how to do this. You double click on the big T and you choose a color. So let's say I choose a nice green. I go out of there. Oh, that looks nice. So I've got a nice little heading there. Okay, what about um, images? So I've gone onto Creative Commons, the search engine, oldsearch.creativecommons.org, and I've downloaded a couple of pictures that I can use copyright free. So again, I go into the rectangle frame tool and I, I'm going to choose an ellipse tool. I'm going to make a big circle and open that up. I'm going to use the top movement tool just to move that circle until I see the line in the center. So that's going to position my circle nicely in the center of the page there. I'm going to put a picture inside that circle. If I right click inside there and I look at content, you'll notice it now says it says graphic. So uh, I can now put a picture in there. And the way to do that is to go File, Place, File, Place to go and get your picture. Go into my Downloads folder, and here's the picture that I chose earlier. And I click Open. And you'll notice it kind of fits, but not nicely, inside that circle. So again, the, the tools I can use are at the top here. So I can go into here where it says Auto Fit. So it makes contents resize as frame resizes. So if I reframe the size, it's going to automatically adjust the contents. I don't want to do that. Uh, the one above it says fill frame proportionally. So that fills the frame and it does it in proportion. That one does, I'll hover the mouse, fit content proportionally. So fits the content, not the frame. Again, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. I just find the one I want. <laughs> Click on it. Uh, use Control Z to undo anything you don't want. And just play with it until you've got something that looks nice. Now what about some text? So I need to tell the person uh, some tips. So I'm going to use I'm going to use a rectangular frame tool. And I'm just going to make one box here. And then I'm going to put some text in there. So I'm going to go right click. And I'm going to go content and change it to text. I'm going to go to my text tool. I'm going to pop it in there. And I'm going to do the same basically as I did before. Just change my text color to a dark blue. Um, and at the top here, you have all kinds of controls. But let's, let's type some text in here. So um, uh, your Password should have uppercase and lowercase text, numbers, and special characters. So I'll just do my basic sizing, things like that. Uh, maybe that's a bit too big. So I put some text in there. Again, I'm going to just put it in the center. Uh, and if I choose my movement tool, I can move my text box around and position it. And I can resize the box so that the content fits inside the box nicely. Okay, so I could do that. If So that's the top movement tool, the selection tool. If I go to the Direct Selection tool, if I use in the box, you'll notice what's happening is moving the whole box around. 
for the picture if I'm using that one. As I move it around, it changes the picture inside it. So the top movement tool moves the box. The second one moves the contents inside the box. So if I'm in here, it just seems to move the box. So for text, that's slightly different. So that's one text box. And I can go and create another text box for another tip. And you'll notice I'm kind of trying to position my text boxes. Uh, right click, uh, go content, choose text, choose my type tool. Um, it's longer passwords are more secure. And I can go and I can put that in there. Choose a different color, center it. And I can kind of play with all of this until I'm happy with my little text boxes. If I'm inside this text box, for example, one of the things I can do is use a drop cap. So if I go to the far right here and I go drop cap, you'll notice what it does is it makes that big letter there. I could do the same here. I think that could look quite nice. Let's play with that a little bit. So my advice to you is go around and play with these things. So go right click and see what's available. For example, you've got um, I have a range. If I no, I have to select the movement tool, select the box. Whoops. Go right click, and if I go arrange. I can send to the backward or send forward. So I can, this is forward, so it can only go back. So if I go send to back, it'll go behind something that's in front of it. So I can play with that, for example. I can go into effects and I could, for example, put a drop shadow on. So if I put a drop shadow on, notice it opens up my effects for the object. I could also, for example, put um, an inner shadow or an outer glow, etc. And if I click preview, it's going to show me what it's going to look like. Okay, so I think those can go. I think the whole thing can go, actually. Maybe. Yeah, I, just because an effect is there doesn't mean you you should use it. Um, and I think the same thing is available here for the image. Uh, what was it we chose? Effects. So if I put a drop shadow in there and go OK, you'll notice it's kind of put a drop shadow around my image. So right click and effects, you'll notice it affects the whole box. It doesn't uh, affect um, one element in it. It's for the whole box and for the whole frame and use the movement tool for moving your boxes around and positioning, positioning things accurately on, on the page. Uh, and you can resize them, position them. Um, I quite like that kind of look with the, the, um, the drop caps because I, I, you know, for, for this kind of thing. And remember, if you want to put a colored background in, you create a box and then you'd have to, Right click, choose a range and move it behind. So let me do that quickly. I'm going to choose, let me choose a polygonal one and that'll be quite funky. So let's say I choose that and I go click, click and I put in a color behind and then I go right click and I go range, center back. It does that kind of thing. And I can play around with a few shapes. Just use the movement tool to position it on the screen. Um, whoops. And just kind of play with things until, until you get nice looking effects. You can put in another box with another shape, all of that kind of stuff. Um, play with it, have fun with it. And to save, you just go File, Save and you can save it to your uh, to your folder
I'm just going to save it to the downloads folder. It saves as an I 